Obesity is a serious disease, and it needs to be taken seriously. What we must never do is apportion blame or make fun of people who are obese. Research shows stress and depression can make obesity worse. Besides, we've all been overweight at some point in our lives, even if it was just as a chubby baby. <laughs> but seriously, promoting healthy eating is no joke. That's why we're introducing a new program to get the obese healthy again. Find out more about our program here on this website. So get surfing, and then when you finish surfing, get moving. Let's get moving, America. Has everybody looked at this? Everybody signed off on it. Everybody? What? Legal? Yeah. Mike signed off. Mike signed off. OK, I think I want somebody else besides Mike to look at this. This has happened before. We have two drafts of things bouncing around, and the next thing you know, I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing. Mike says this is the right draft. We, we no, don't. please don't call Mike. We, we can't find Dan. It, uh, the, uh, call legal. Call somebody in legal. Just do that for me, OK? Well, Mike was sure that this It doesn't matter if what Mike said. <clears throat> no disrespect. I don't give a fuck what Mike says. I want you to move off of Mike. I want you to call legal and make sure that Mike and legal have looked at this, and Dan and Amy have looked at the copy that I'm about to say. Mike assured us. He, he, he absolutely assured us that this is the right, right one. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to stay calm. Yes, ma'am. But I'm asking you not to call Mike. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mike got it from legal. Who told you that? Mike did. Mm -mm. I'm asking you to call legal. Right. Um, we got their voicemail. Yeah. Oh, you got legal's voicemail? Yes, ma'am. Fuck it. Let's go. Let's just roll it. Am I in the right position? Yes. Oh. Am I mic'd? <laughs> My fellow Americans, words have many meanings, and sometimes instead of conveying our meaning, they can suggest other meanings and be open to misinterpretation. And because words have many meanings, and what we mean to say when we speak those words can mean so many different things, we can confuse our own meaning and misspeak. We've all done it. It happens to the best of us. Well, yesterday it happened to me, folks, in a private moment that unbeknownst to me was surreptitiously and illegitimately recorded. I misspoke. I'd like now to clarify that misspeaking. I did not and never would mean what some people have inferred I meant when I used the words I accidentally chose in that offhand moment. I meant to speak purely factually and to imply no inherent criticism of any nature. I hope that clarifies the issue, and this can be the last word on those words. I hope now we can put this behind us and continue moving forward with the important work, the work I'm doing for you, the American people. Thank you for listening, and have a blessed day. This is about political behavior. This is not a show about being a woman in politics. I want it to be about the process, how the political process works in Washington. More often than not, how it doesn't work, how it grinds to a halt. What happens behind the cameras or what happens behind the walls of the office don't necessarily match up with what everybody's kind of saying about you. People act this way. Like, we're all kind of crazy. It's the best of both worlds with the relationship-driven show as well as politically driven. This is a comedy about people that are trying to make the world a better place, and albeit they're failing miserably. You can't tell after a while, working on a show like this, if art is imitating life or vice versa, because it just, it's just farcical. Background, action. So what are we going to do? The culture of Veep is definitely unique because we do have the UK, the US mixed crew. It's really about human behavior in politics, no matter where you are. It's about survival. Clean Jobs Task Force likely to be greenlit. That is so great for me. And the country. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. What's really amazing about Armando is the process he's created. He's a fan of improv or putting things on their feet. He's ready to drop all of the material that he has written to see what 
you as an actor can come up with in a moment. We always get a loose take. We'll shoot the heck out of it and he'll say, all right, why don't we just make this one looser? Just have a bit of fun. Yeah, just, just play about yeah. it. There's a lot of improvisation, people talk over each other. You know, it feels incredibly real. I think Washington has been portrayed in the past as a pretty earnest place. And I think this is a window into a different Washington that might be a little bit more realistic. I thought for a long time, where, where should we set this? Should we set it in the Senate or the House or should it be in a governor's mansion? And then I just sat bolt upright one day and just said, should be the vice president. Armando's idea was a competent, accomplished woman who becomes vice president of the United States and the dysfunctional capital that we have now. Inherent in politics, there is comedy. I think because it's, it's, filled with conflict, and conflict is, can be very funny. Why don't we just wait this out, okay? Come back to the... Is that what you're gonna suggest? The VP, it's a funny position, I think, because you have very little power, but you are a heartbeat away from being the most powerful person in the world. Which way are you gonna vote? The way my principles and conscience tell me to go. Which way do you think that should be? America is very much into winners. So the last thing you want about your job is something that more or less makes you have to wear a big badge all day saying, I came second. It is so close to being important, but there are so many other people around you that have so much more power. Did the president call? No. No. I compare it back to British politics and like the deputy prime minister, that's a pretty useless role as well. It's like, you know, giving crayons to a kid at a family meal or something like that to stop them from misbehaving. Yeah, just, there you go. POTUS is anxious after recent events that you don't feel he's trying to nudge you out of the process of government. Oh, isn't that thoughtful, Amy? One of the cornerstones of comedy is the way you make something funny is you take it so seriously that it's funny. And I think that's what's so funny about the DC machine. They take it so seriously. It goes like right past drama up to like absurdity. If I can get cornstarch utensils in most federal buildings by the fall, well then, the Veep has landed. That is what we are working on, landing you. Yeah. Like a big, beautiful eagle. It's about people under pressure. That's what leads to them doing ridiculous things. You can't ignore that, you know, when when people are in a fishbowl that, I mean, they can just behave like, like ninnies. I'm gonna go back to the White House. That address makes me hard. Ooh. Kiss you, miss you. What has happened over the period of the show's development is that Washington keeps catching up with Veep and becoming even more farcical and ridiculous. And it's fun showing these really important people being annoying to each other, jealous of each other, rude to each other. Do I look like a pimp to you? You look exactly like a pimp. There's not a pushing for the comedy with this show because the circumstances are so whacked out. If you sit back and do it as believably as if it were to happen, that's hilarious because life is funny that way. At the show that I had just finished working on, I was trying to green up our set and I had some success. But where I did not have success was with the cornstarch utensils. Are you kidding? Yep. Do these not bend back? I wanted a cast who had all come through comedy backgrounds or, or improvisation backgrounds so that we had on set a whole gang of comedy brains. I love the idea of, of playing somebody who's made it but hasn't really made it. Julia's performance is extraordinary. She gets laughs that you didn't know were there. I could not think of one other woman who could handle the subtle funny of this and her lead in the scenes that were all together set the tone we all you know just try to keep up selena is a powerful person who's thwarted by the system she's thwarted by herself in the system she's thwarted by her staff she will forever blame her staff it doesn't matter but it will always be their fault it's your job to know that if i say i have it covered i don't have it covered and you cover me when selena was offered the the vice presidency she thought well i want amy on board and amy was like how good can this offer be? And you know, she got chief of staff. The chief of staff has to keep the vice president in the frame of mind that it's okay to be number two. And that's great. And that's an incredible position. God, if 
I mm. would Don't say if I were president. It's the VP bear trap. I'll just think it. When we came out to do some research in DC, we were told about the body man, the guy who goes around with the bag. Gary is Selena's special assistant. Wherever she's at, I'm at. <laughs> I've got to carry around this large bag that has all of her stuff she needs, some public things, some unmentionables. It's a nice bag, Gary. You know, he calls that the Leviathan. Ooh. You got the nuclear codes in there, buddy? Sue's sort of Selena's guard at the door, if you will. The diary scheduler's job is, is there to protect her boss's time. You know, if you want a meeting, she'll probably say no. I schedule every minute of her life. Uh, pretty much no ins or outs without my permission. Gotta talk to her for uh, one moment, no, please. No, she's actually really burdened right now with a bunch of uh, Sue, stuff. Sue, it'll take she's one found. second, she... literally. Mike, she's spinning. Oh, okay. This character, Dan, is prepared to do what it takes to get to the next level. He literally says nothing, does nothing, without thinking, how will this advance my career? Right. What can this do for me? And it's been really interesting to just play such a selfish prick. I cannot believe you are dating your boss's daughter. She's fun, she's sexy, she can advance my career. I really like her. Mike McClintock, and he's known Selena forever, and he's sort of on the tail end of his career. Mike is my head of communications. He's ineffectual. He means well, though, but he's a little bit tired. Actually, he's quite tired. You can't read everything. I don't read half the stuff I'm supposed to. Tim Simons plays Jonah. He is the person who the White House and the West Wing sends over to the Vice President's office. I think he's very honest about his situation, allows him certain perks, and I think he's, uh, I think he enjoys causing problems for people. I'm sorry, ma'am, but you have drawn the fat straw. I will have all the relevant documents forwarded onto your teams. Okay, it's your bedtime. Get out of my office. Good night. We're shooting in Baltimore because a, it's proximity to Washington, D.C. It's easy to shoot here. There's great crew, great locations. It's hard to get close to any of the Washington locations. There's a lot of rules. It's a logistical nightmare to shoot in Washington. What we wanted to do, and, and the Vice President's office was very helpful, was actually do an exact replica, which we built in this warehouse in Baltimore. We built uh, an exact replica of the corridor and the offices and her office and the bullpen where everyone else is. Oh, it's amazing. The hallway outside is almost an exact copy of the hallway at the Eisenhower building. It's a little bit bigger to accommodate for the cameras and whatnot. It's important that it seems real. There's a tendency to um, try to portray Washington in on TV and in film as, as, as a glamorous place. Um, and what we wanted to see was behind the white painted Georgian facade. A lot of it is shabby. I mean, anyone who's been around Washington knows a lot of the offices are very powerful people. People are shocked when they see them in real life because they're, you know, they're messy like anyone else's office is full of junk. An office desk and an office chair were clearly bought from different vendors. And so you have an office chair that doesn't fit under an office desk and they are paired together and that's your workspace. I tell you, the art department and set dressing and props, and they, these people have worked so hard on this job. Ernesto Martinez, our costume designer and stylist, he's so good at thinking about the character's wardrobe as a closet. When I got the job and I got the call, I channeled Michelle Obama. You know, I just thought Michelle's style was really great for Julia. I wanted her to look good and sexy and yet powerful and admit that. Every town has its style, and DC does as well, so we're just trying to capture what it really is. At the end of the day, as actors, we're playing pretend, you know? And it's really fun to, you feel like a little kid again when you get to go back and you put on that costume that changes everything about you. It's like, oh, no, 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 I'm not Reed right now, now I'm Dan. And you really just get to just go and have fun. And, and all of our castmates, you, you can see that happen. We show up come out of hair and makeup with our suits on or, you know, the, the, the wonderful dresses that Julie gets to wear and Anna gets to wear and Soupy gets to wear and everyone's in character and ready to go. Beep, beep. We use two cameras um, and that basically enables the actors to move around. They're on, they have radio mics, they can walk around wherever they want. It's very loose and very um, free-flowing. It is all handheld and we do it's, it is a challenge for the crew because we have to light a room 360 so the cameras can be swinging in every angle at any time. They're only very loose marks. The actors are given a lot of freedom to move around and the cameras are given loose direction on who to focus on. 
about finding the comedy and exploring the environment. I wanted to show a, a side of DC that people haven't really seen before. There's Congressman Clements, you should speak with her. She's got a small mustache, it's a little disturbing, don't stare oh. at it. We wanted to see the, the when people go into work and they show their security pass and they sit at their desk where they are and what they're doing. You have uh, one community college meeting this afternoon. Is that it? Yes. It's a political comedy series that might really show Washington in all its uh, dubious glory. Don't you, Yesmen, ever say no to her? Oh, of course they do. Yeah, they do, yeah. There's a lot that's transferable, I think, from Britain to America in terms of the dysfunction of democracy. Why don't I know this? Because you're incompetent. I don't think there's been a comedy that has tackled Washington in quite this way before. The Vice President of the United States. That door should be half its height so that people can only approach me in my office on their knees. As an audience member, I love that kind of stuff. It's like eating chocolate all day long. You know, sometimes I wonder, you know, when I was back there, when I was senator, I wonder if I had more influence. You know what I mean? Well, thank you for your tremendous support. And I, I can actually tell you what to fucking do. See, Ooh. okay, check this out. I'm gonna text you the name of a guy that's here right now who backed the winning candidate in the presidential nominations and not the candidate who lost. <laughs> jungle? That's you. No. Jungle. Oh, fuck me, that's predictive text. Look, you know what I wrote. I wrote my name. Easy, Jungle. Hey, Gary, do you have the uh, bag within the bag? Yeah. That is what Bags you need to do. Bag. So what's the deal with the catering at this thing? Is it tonight we feast like Vikings or little beef molecules? Finger food. Works for me. I got big fingers. You know these evil geniuses, they don't give you a plate to discourage you from getting a free meal. But I always say, the forearm, nature's plate. Mm. Lovely. By the way, I'm Mike. Hey, Mike. Mike. Excuse me. Sorry, Mike. Yeah. Mike, mm -hmm. Tom's ready to introduce the beat. Okay. <clears throat> hey, uh, baby Gaga? One more minute. I think your mom wants to talk to you. Hey, Defcon One, go, please. Hey, hey Mike. Uh, can we get secret service? Mike, you need to leave. Hold on, Jonah. Mike, you're a speechwriter you for the leave. vice president of the United Shut States. Up. Can you not handle a six-year-old girl? Come here. There's a candy bowl right over there. There's a candy bowl right over there. Hey, Mike. Get some candy. Don't fucking talk to me. We need to talk about the VP speech, okay? What? Yeah, I can't see that. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You take my stuff again, Bigfoot, I'll fucking crush your fucking larynx. Which leads me to the number eight. There are eight pillars of Senate vote reform, which, uh, which we must fight. We've got to fight to implement. Well, this isn't exactly the Gettysburg Address. It's more a recreation of the tragic events that led to it. And the lawmakers in this town are here for one purpose, to help American citizens li li live full and satisfying lives. Hold up, is that, is that your date? Yeah. Why? She's nice, man. She's an eight. 
know, I used to get sixes, but I'm in the White House now. I get eights. I don't think I've ever seen you with an eight, Jonah. Oh, Dan, I get eights. I'm up to my neatly trimmed and well-oiled nutsack and eights, so. He just made me vomit in my mouth. Look, if you're not comfortable with your feelings. This has been fun, folks. I have something to attend to because I'm working. Don't run away from me, Amy. Bye, Angel. You can't fight it. You talking about my bag? Let me show you something. Let me just show you something right here. You see this? Mm -hmm. This is heavy duty, medicated lip balm. If our beep is in too many air-conditioned rooms, her lips get radically dry. Without it, she can't talk. So I do a serious job. Clearly. It's like crabs in a barrel, you know, just pulling You're each other. Hi, yes, yeah, Mr. Rosenfeld, how are you? The reason for my call is that I'm sure you've heard about the, uh, um, uh, the unfortunate comment that I made this evening, um, at, at a, oh, oh, you, 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 had, you hadn't heard. I told you not to call. Uh, we should have waited. We should have waited on this. Okay. Um, I was at a fundraiser this evening for the SRBA. Um, I used the word, um, um, re retard. It was lighthearted, and I, I meant it really in, almost in an affectionate way. Oh, okay. Colloquial? Uh, it's a colloquial. What is retard? Colloquial. Okay, that's fine. No, 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 that's fine. Go ahead. It's gone to get a pen. It's gonna take some notes, okay? You Don't write me notes when I'm doing this. I can't read your writing. I said you get I can't read your writing. Okay. Okay, this is what you need to do now, Kathy. Are you listening? Become substantially better at your job and call me when that's happened. Is this gonna be like moonlighting where we fall in love and start fucking? No, more like National Geographic where one spider fucks another spider and then eats that spider. Is she in, Sue? Yes, she is, Amy. Thank you for checking. Hey, Mike, can I get a look at your hot list? I don't have a hot list. You, you don't have reporters' private numbers and off-radar email addresses? Oh, my hot list. Yeah. Sorry, Slick. For my eyes only. Nobody gets a look at McClintock's treasure. McClintock's treasure? Yeah. Sure hope you didn't put that in the shared file. Put on my shared file. <laughs> no! No! And we're in. Like Sophie's choice, but you know it's more important because it's about me. You want to put it here? That's fine. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ah, let me just, um, just, oh, make it. Uh, okay. Thanks for everything. Thank you. Madam Vice President, the air conditioning in this vehicle isn't working. My apologies. Oh, well, I'm not getting into a car without any air conditioning in this seat. Forget about it. I'll go in the other car. Sorry, ma'am. Unsecured vehicle. Replacement vehicle is on the way. No, We're in the I, middle of pre -schedule. I, I, I don't, I don't want to wait. We can go in the other one. I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. You can't just get into an unsecured vehicle. Come on, man. What are you going to do? You're going to shoot me? <laughs> You're going to shoot me for not getting into my bulletproof car? No, ma'am. Our job is to protect you. Then protect me from the heat. I'm dying here. You need to get into the bulletproof vehicle. Yeah, I know. Now. Okay. Yeah. You know what? If the other car gets bullet holes in it, that air conditioning won't work. Yeah. Could you go oh, in here, yeah. please? Yeah, yeah. Yes. The... You know, this has been sabotaged by Al Qaeda. That's what's going on here. They're trying to poach me to death. Did somebody use my bathroom, Mike? Well, I'm going to go get some coffee. Anybody want coffee? Yeah, I'll take one. I suggest you go get some coffee like I'm doing. Oh my god, asshole. Twofold. Dan and Jonah, out please. What? Just so you know, this is also what would happen if we were in a lifeboat. You know, just for the record, if this was a lifeboat, they would never take Gary over me. Yeah, well, or me. The only reason they'd keep Gary is so they could eat him. Hi, uh, Senator Doyle went black swan over Chuck. He says we promised him no oil. And technically, we stuck to that. Well, for him, not technically being lied to felt like being lied to. Like a sexual assault doesn't feel any better if your assailant puts on some Barry White. If anything, it makes it more harrowing. What book are you reading, honey? Um, Lady Chatterley's Lover. Hmm. I don't know that book. 
T.H. Lawrence. You wanna? I'm gonna sort of highlighting some stuff for my essay. If you oh, no kidding. Take a gander. Sure. Such a good girl, doing her homework in the car. I never did. Right? No. He never did. She felt the glide of his cheek on her thighs and belly and buttocks, and the close brushing of his mustache and his soft thick hair, and her knees began to quiver. <laughs> so, there you go. You can read the rest later. Now, did. let me show you. Okay, Maybe so I got a real excuse. Now. Look what you did. Well, there you go. There you go. So, where's Carol Alice? Oh, I think she left some military guy. Oh, what the fuck? Seriously? You know what? Fuck those guys. They leverage post-traumatic stress into blowjobs. At uniform, that's an unfair advantage. It's like having extra testicles. How would having four balls be an advantage? I didn't say just four. Could be more. owe it to those who choose to come to this country to give them a full working democracy that reflects their values and their wishes. <laughs> Politics is about people. I know, I've, I've, I've said- Why don't they put this shit on YouTube? Why do they always upload her breaking down? Mm, you'd never know that all of her words were uploaded onto a memory stick. I... Yeah. So, yeah. well done. Well done, you. Thank you. Amy, let me tell you about this guy. Last time I saw him was backstage at Rock the Vote. Oh, yeah. Man. And this man hustled me out of 50 bucks at the pool table. Hustled? Well, I'm hurt. You hustled me. <laughs> you hustled. See, he's so good he believes his own lies. Yeah, a lot of sociopaths <laughs> are able to do that. <laughs> Amy, is Dan in love? Why would I know that? Well, you used to date him, and I'm asking because I'm wondering why would he allow his lady friend to make him late for work? I figured it's gotta be love. Yeah. That's anthropomorphism, Sue. You're just projecting human characteristics onto him. Hmm. So. Yeah, I think that Dan is just waiting for it to become legal to marry himself. Probably sees it as a civil rights issue. But mother, one aneurysm away from the presidency, how do you think that plays? Hey. My uh, hushed tones antenna is buzzing. Anything I should know about? Amy, we are wondering what is taking the photographer so long. Yeah, I get... do you think he knows what he's doing? Well, let me put him under the Jonah grill. Mm -hmm. See if he burns. Thank you, Jonah. <laughs> action stuff, I do take a little action stuff. You do? Yeah. yeah where? Uh, I have an ultimate frisbee team on Saturday, so I usually do a lot of. Uh, you take pictures while you're playing. I uh, in the breaks we sub out. Put you on the email list if you want to. I'm good, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'll be the adult version of Gary. Um, uh, say you meet Mark Reynolds. Mark Reynolds. I, uh, I could tell you in Tuesday's game he had a two-out RBI single in the bottom of the eleventh that gave them a walk-off win against the Yankees. Ah, okay. Uh. Just all five senses of mine went numb completely. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, it's just Forget regular Forget it, I'm just gonna wing it. Forget it. Okay. You know, maybe if it's a boy, I will name him after you. Call it Fuck Weasel. Oh, somebody's swearing for two now. No, no more. Hey. No more. I told the kids they could sing some of the songs for us while we wait for the beep. Well, that's a suspiciously nice gesture. Yeah, well, one of the dads in there is 260 pounds. Looks like he could punch out a fucking hippo. For you, you can keep that, you can give it to your dad, whatever you want to do. Can I have one? Okay, all right, all right, but look, but look, I'm gonna pass these out, but these, these are like gold, all right? So treat them with respect. Don't call after six. Do you love him? No way. Damn, that, that was heartwarming. Really. Thank you, Leanne. And, and you know what? Not at all exploitive. You don't feel exploited, do you, son? No. Well, you should be. I played you like a banjo. I don't know, you got the, the intuition or whatever. Dan, I once had sex with you. I have no intuition. It doesn't even look like food. It looks like it should be used to pack a wound. If we're gonna be forced to sell this type of food, I'd just start shopping around for a cheaper house. Excuse me, guys. Pardon me. How's it going? Great. 
We were just uh, talking about how bad the food is that your vice president wants us to sell. You guys are telling food anecdotes? There is this French restaurant in D.C. guaranteed to turn you into a human crop sprayer. Mm. I take dates there when I don't want to have sex with them. Is that a regular problem for you? Mm. I work in the White House, so I get eights. This healthy buffet's bullshit. Can you make a nacho with less fat, no salt? It's not a nacho, it's a spoonful of flour. Amy, do you want anything? Uh, just a venti cappuccino with crack sprinkles, please. Oh, and cinnamon. I'll get you mint tea. Quiet today, Sue. Yes, it is. It's nice. It was nice before you started commenting on it. So what should we do, guys? Should we color within the lines in our coloring books, or I'll trade you my PBJ for some fruit roll-ups? This has the potential to be huge. Yeah, it's certainly the most important piss she's ever taken. Oh, uh, Leon, what can we do for you? Well, I was wondering when I might have a word with the beep. Look, I guarantee it'll be in the next 30 minutes. Okay, make it 10, unless you want to be slapped in front of children. Okay. I mean, seriously, I cannot believe you're doing so. Really, no, the last time I saw you, you, you were so drunk, you tried to take a shit in a garbage can. <laughs> do you remember that with the garbage can? I don't remember, because it never happened, Sean. You're so funny. Leon, what brings you here? Oh, I'm just here to make your life miserable, Mike. Who's this prick? Uh, this prick is Leon West, the Beltway Butcher. Sean? Oh. oh. Right. How are you enjoying Baltimore? So, hold on, Amy. I'm enjoying the tension on Mike's face right now. You don't laugh it off, you fucking dumbass. You shut it down. All right, OK. I'm, I'm doing everything I can right now to shut this down. You know I can see you, Mike. Over here? Put the plate down. Just set down the ham there, Mike. It's actually pancetta, but still very impressive, man. Haas, can I get a little pre-breakfast breakfast? A little teaser before, you know, actual breakfast? What do you say? Don't laugh. You look like a fucking Mormon. <laughs> what? Hmm. <laughs> now, since I can't even get my breakfast anywhere, I'm gonna go to my real job. Have fun at the record store, you nine use piece of shit. Uh, you get a tie that doesn't make you look gay. <laughs> this was a gift. Menstrual! Uh, dude. On first reaction, that's a terrible idea. And upon further reflection, that's fucking horrible. I mean, come on. What if there's something really incriminating in there? Like what, Dan? Ma'am, uh, ma there's pockets in my bag that I haven't even told you about, so I'm against it. Just Guess what, you. Gary? This isn't a yeah. democracy. Okay. All right? And <laughs> would you please stop obsessing about the fucking bag? I mean, what could possibly be in the uh, bag that was... Yeah, they don't have to know everything yeah. that's in the bag. Mm. Oh, of course not. Sue, I'd yeah. like you to order me a taser. I'd like to have a taser next time I see Jonah, okay? That would be really useful to me. Madam Vice President. I'm actually not kidding about that. What? POTUS has made me aware that he is aware of your full disclosure initiative. Can I just say full credit to the redacting team? Great yep. redaction action, boys and girls. Absolutely. And he would also like me to let you know that he will be providing White House resources to your community colleges summit. Oh, is that his? Dysfunctional way of <laughs> letting me know I'm doing okay? Well, I'd shy away from the word dysfunctional, but yes, two thumbs skyward and so on. Oh, good, good. Sue, did the president call? No. Oh, thank you, Jonah. So, uh, Mike, are we dealing with a Secret Service situation yes. or? I'm on it like an okay. Easter bonnet. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean exactly? What are you doing? Yeah, well, uh, I was thinking that maybe. Uh, Amy acted alone? No, seriously, Mike. Oh, wait, no. Huh. That could work. She went rogue. Yeah, I like that. Sorry, Amy, but you know what? That does work for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could work for you. Hey, drop the attitude, okay, Amy? Unless you want to be chief of staff to a dog walker. <laughs> yes. 
Thanks a lot for that blame Amy line. I was spitballing, okay? I didn't think it would go over that well. But she never listens to me. Is that your unit? Uh-huh. He's dead, IED. He's dead, sniper. He committed suicide, so therefore dead. That's me. He's dead, friendly fire. He lost both legs below the knee. Oh, that is gross, huh? Ugh. I mean, tough. That is tough. My father was just taken into the hospital for an emergency heart bypass. Gary's been incredibly supportive. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> I have small ears, but they're good for listening. We love your piglet ears. <laughs> well, it's certainly a much more pleasant atmosphere than I'd been led to expect. <laughs> Mike, he's not playing with Chung, is he? That guy's trying to putt his way into my job. Why didn't POTUS ask me to play golf? He knows you're going to Ohio to endorse Roger Furlong, so... Are you believing I have to have FaceTime with that guy? I mean, really, honestly, Amy, it's exactly like talking to a bladder. Dan had a plan. Mm. Dan always has a plan. He's like Top Cat. Top Cat were a sociopathic shit. We're having to bust people in from out of state, Dan, and that is now a story that's in the press. I'm talking about how it's costing us a hot hooker's fortune just to make this thing look like a grassroots deal, but it's all bullshit. It's not grassroots. It's astroturf. Just, it's fake grass. Shut the hell up, okay? And this is all because the shit stinks Selena, too. Yeah, sir, if we could put the shit stink aside for this one second. This is my second. fucking wedding night, Dan. And as I prepare to tenderly take the party faithful of Ohio in my arms and make them a woman, I really don't need Grandma Meyer cheering me on from the foot of the bed. Do I well? No, sir. That would be unsettling. I saw passion, I saw raw emotion. I saw a fucking crazy lady, that's what I saw. The congressman feels that she appeared to be having several mini strokes on television. Tell you what, she does not get up there and speak today. <laughs> now, Congressman, you and I both know there's no chance in hell we're gonna keep her from speaking. Okay, fine, she speaks. Just the star-spangled shit, okay? Are you a little girl, ma'am? Sounds like it's going somewhere cute. Can you skip to the end part? Because if you're not, I guess that makes you a big girl, and big girls don't cry, do they, Will? Not to my knowledge, sir. Oh, hmm. Wasn't really worth the journey, was it? Good to see you again. I thought this would be more awkward, but yeah. And yet it's not awkward at all, is it, Mike? No. Well, I'm uh, rolling with you guys today, so uh, I guess we'll saddle up. I, I got a car game, if anybody wants. If you had to, pizza or pasta? One carbohydrate forever. Which one? Tuffy, right? So this is a real job, huh? Balloon sculptress? You're a fuzzy rope guy, right? All right, grab the fuzzy rope, bring that over here and line it up around these guys. This is our fucking background? Ohio Citizen for Democracy. OCD, really? Nobody picked up on that. God damn it. Let me use your Blackberry. No, what's wrong with yours? My battery's down to 12%. I'm trying to turn the percent thing off because it's somehow more troubling than just the battery symbol. Mike, please stop being so fascinating or I'm gonna have to kiss you. Ma'am? Mm hmm Did you get a chance to look at that new Ohio joke at the top? Oh, you mean this one about the shape of the word Ohio? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny, right? <laughs> no. West Wing, Jonah. Look, I'm, I'm running out of charge. Just tell me right now, who is the president playing golf with? Mike, are you calling me for West Wing intel? Look, just tell me the name of the guy standing or walking next to the president. Let me see. Uh, he's a small man. Oh, no, it's just a large man far away. Okay, okay, look, Jack Prickolis. Just tell me the name of the guy before this thing dies. I am talking as fast as I possibly can. Oh, oh shit, that was going to be funny. Michael, there you go. Here you go. Oh, good. Okay, no, don't do that, all right? Mm. Oh, it's completely cold. Oh, son of a bitch. All right, uh, insecurity. Oh, love it. She has tons of them. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Whole category for insecurities. All the boys club stuff. Like the golf thing today, right? Her elephant elbow skin? The, she calls it cookie dough. Cookie dough? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess the Felicia interview is playing pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Veep weep all over Twitter. People love it. I know, Twitter. Yeah.
I am a political giant. I really am. I can almost see all you losers from where I am. <laughs> uh, Mike and I were talking about strategy. So. Oh, good. Yeah. Keynote yeah. here. Uh huh. We let it play. Oh. Well. So just carry on as usual. Do nothing. Is that your strategy, Mike? No, no. It's active passivity, ma'am. This uh -huh. is a play. Thank you, Mike. Sue, I am going to need you to find me an elastic twenty. Am I may have already issued a press release regarding my promotion. You're the victim of your own ruthlessness. I, I wouldn't I, feed this to my wife. Uh huh. You know, this, what what this, is your wife? I'm so uh -huh. sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh. That that lady who made the cake for you wants to speak with you. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, I'm oh. so sorry. Can I have that chicken? Can oh yeah. That? Knock yourself out. Oh, thanks. Knock yourself out. Okay, I got some good news though. What? That interview you did with that reporter Felicia is uh -huh. playing really, really well. All really right. Well. well, that's something. Look at this place, Gary. Seriously, look at it. It's like part retirement home, part kindergarten, 100% insane asylum. The Washington Post piece is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Wither the Republic whose stoutest servants are made to cry for their nation's pity. That is beautiful. What does it mean? Like you three to follow me, please, into my office. office. Jonah, feel free to join us. I'd like you to bring this news back to POTUS, as a matter of fact. Really? Yeah. Come on in and breathe the better air. Don't break anything. Well, I think I can handle myself. Oh, I now I'm just going to run through this really quickly. Obesity is a serious disease and it needs to be taken seriously. <laughs> okay. What we must never do is apportion blame or make fun of people who are obese. Research shows stress and depression can make obesity worse. Okay, that's obvious. Besides, we've all been overweight at some point in our lives. I'm not gonna say that. Well, <laughs> even if it was just as a chubby baby, is that, is that supposed to be a joke? That, that line? But seriously, promoting healthy eating is no joke. You could have fucking fooled me. That's why we're introducing a new program to get the obese healthy again. Oh my God. Find out more about our program here on this website. So get surfing. And then when you're finished surfing, get moving. Let's get moving, America. Get up off your dead one. That's what my dad used to say. Get up off your dead one. But I guess that won't work as a slogan.